Hello folks, today we are going to start a new webinar series on the AWS Code Commit, Code Build and Code Deploy services. That is the AWS DevOps services that we have and we are going to start looking at them. What is exactly AWS Code Commit? Let us say you are a developer and you are writing some code and then there will be obviously some place that you will check in. Typically you might use a, a GitLab server or a GitHub itself as a private repository or it might be a Bitbucket. And Similarly, Amazon has a service that is called as code commit, which is very similar and you can use a very familiar git commands to commit your code. So typically you're writing some code, maybe it is an update for an existing code or a patch for a code that is already in production. Uh, there might be some changes or new features and you want to check in. This is where code commit comes in. So you can write your code and commit it. And why do you have to use code commit when you have all the other services? So these are some of the benefits that you get when you're using code commit for example it uses a similar familiar git source control version mechanism and apart from that it doesn't have any size limits that you have in a typical repository that you might have because the back end for amazon code commit is s3 storage so you get the scalability availability and also the no size limit so you're literally removing the size problems also since it is an s3 you can also have your encryption enabled there so that all the objects that are committed to your repository can be encrypted and likewise you can have sns notifications whenever there is a new commit that is happening in your repository and you can push on this notifications through a lambda function say for example somebody commits a new code and you want to trigger a build or you want to send a notification to somebody for validating some kind of an uh, a quality check on the code itself so you can write an amazon lambda uh, lambda function or a simple notification service and trigger a downstream actions here i have a couple of screenshots of what the typical features looks like if you have a tree or a lot of branches that is happening in your code you can go ahead and visualize the commit a history that has happened in your code and it will look up in a nice visualization that you can see which branch is coming up merging where and then you can go ahead and navigate them Suppose they you want to know uh, information about a particular commit, that is also possible. You can just go ahead and read that particular commit. The GUI is flexible enough to get you through with certain actions that you want to do it in your Git control system. Let us go ahead and see how to use the GUI. Code commit is a separate service itself. So you will have a, se a separate dashboard for it. And you can see here for initially, if you are going to start out or you're learning something or if you are a small company, then you can notice that there are first five active users are free. So there is no cost for using the servers. And then you, the amount of storage is going to be in S3. So your storage costs are also going to be very, very negligible. So let us go ahead and create our first repository. And I'm just going to call it create. Now my repository is created and it doesn't have anything. So this is the part where you want to configure your IDE, maybe a Visual Studio code or Eclipse that you want to configure it and push the code. Then you will take this a URL and then set it up here. The next video we'll see that. But here let us explore the GUI itself. So if I want to add a file, I can just go ahead and say We have added an initial commit message. Let us go ahead and commit our changes. Now our first file will be created now. And since we created a markdown file, you can see here the markdown is actually processed and you can see the big bold font. So you can go ahead and see the source or if you want to go ahead and edit it, you can go ahead and edit it. And on the left hand side, we talked about the commits. And if I go and click on that, we'll see the commit here. And if I can click on that, I can see the commit history and what was added here. So let me just go ahead and make some more edits so we will see what has changed exactly here. So let us commit our changes. And if I go to my commit section now, and I'll see another new commit and I can go ahead and see what has changed here. So I can go ahead and do a diff also here if I want to see what is the, what has changed between the previous commit and this commit. So let us go back to commits here and you can see here there's a compare commits. I'm just going to copy the old commit ID and go to compare commits and then I'm going to say destination is master 
and for source i'm going to say use commit id and then going to click on compare and it is going to do a diff online and it is going to show me where are the differences so if i'm not happy with the change one of my teammate has made it and then i can do a diff and then add a comment to that saying i'm not happy with this change and the other person will have to go and look and review it and then they can modify the code so if you want to visualize what are the changes that has been done you can go to visualizer and then you can see all the commits that are there what are the branches see for example if you want to go to the branches we don't have any branch other than the master so if you are going to create another branch you can go ahead and do that online also or you can create let us say there is a feature branch that is to be created and i want to source it from master and then click on create branch so we have a brand new branch created and it's as simple as anything that you use in any version control system. Go ahead and try it. If you have any problems, put them in the comment section. We can learn from each other. In the next video, we will see how to set up your CLI so that you can interact with AWS code commit from your CLI. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.